Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's a Thursday, which means it's time for a magic stuff. And today we're gonna to be doing another of the three best things. First of all, thank you so much for all of the kind things that you've said about the three best things series. I absolutely have a blast putting these together because I spend a lot of time um, researching and going back through books and going through, back through old magazines. I've got like every issue of Abracadabra from the 1940s. And I, I actually just spend a lot of time researching this trying to find the best different things. A lot of the time I'll find more than three tricks. So hopefully I'm gonna do follow on uh, tricks from this, but, uh, or follow on videos, sorry. But today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the three best tricks with two packs of cards that you've never seen before. Because there are lots of tricks with two packs of cards. One red pack, one blue pack, you bring them out, you do something amazing with it. There's been lots and lots of different routines uh, through the years, a lot of do as I do's and a lot of kind of coincidence style routines. But there's a lot of other stuff that you can actually do with two packs of cards. Uh, and I'm going to show you the three best tricks that I think that use two packs of cards, two regular packs of cards that you've probably never seen before. So let's get straight onto it and have a look at the first trick. So the first routine using two packs of cards that you've never seen before is by David Acker. Now, if you are a follower of this channel, you know I'm a massive fan of David Acker. He's a Canadian magician. He's written some awesome books. And this is found in Random Acts of Magic. Random Acts of Magic is an amazing book. You can still get it, and I advise you to go and get it. But this routine is called Switchback. Um, and, and you know what? It's one of those routines I've never seen anyone else do uh, because it's buried in a book from many, many years ago. And there's so much great material in Random Acts of Magic uh, that, that I think a lot of people overlook this routine. Um, so I'm hopefully going to bring it to everyone's attention so more people actually start doing it. I'm going to perform it for you and then we'll talk about why it's so great. Reagan, I have a couple of packs of cards right here. I have a red deck and I have a blue deck. Okay. Uh, we're going to try and do something. Yeah. kind of weird uh, we'll put the blue deck over there in front of you and we'll use the uh the red deck okay okay now there's a rule in magic never tell the audience what you're going to do before you do it okay i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do you're going to pick a card yeah. i'm going to make it uh disappear it's as simple as that cool it's quite 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 simple <laughs> i'm going to take a card i'm going to make it disappear um, so you can grab any card that you want to. There's 52 cards in the deck. We're going to make it completely random, though. Okay. So I'm going to uh, cut cards down onto a table like this. As I do, just say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Yep. Okay. So it, it doesn't really matter what the card is, because uh, whatever card it is, I, I can make it disappear. But we'll, we'll have a look at it. The queen, the, sorry, the king of clubs. Are you happy with the king of clubs? Yeah. Cool. So I want to watch. I've told you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that card disappear right in front of your eyes. Are you ready for this? Watch, one, two, three, and it's gone. No, it has, it's gone, I know, you, 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 <laughs> no, it has. Because you see, there's a rule in magic, you can't just make something disappear, it has to be replaced by something else. So all I did is I made your king of clubs disappear and I replaced it with another king of clubs. Okay. Now genuinely, because this blue deck's been here the whole time, yeah. what I did is I made your king of clubs disappear and go into the blue deck, and the king of clubs that was in the blue deck I put here, in case you think I'm joking, I'm not, that's blue. See, I told you, yeah. which means that over here in the blue deck, we have one card and one card only, right there in the middle, and that would be the king of clubs. See, I told you, I wouldn't lie to you, not at all. You look confused. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again. Um, we're gonna, we'll do it again. I'm not meant to repeat a trick, but I'm gonna repeat the trick, I'm gonna do it again. Which deck do you want me to put in the box? The red deck or the blue deck? The red deck. Okay. It's important that you realize that you are making all the rules here, Reagan. So if you want the, uh, the red deck in the box, that is what we get. Uh, in fact, I need you to help me. What I want you to do is hold your hand out for me. <clears throat> Very good. I'm just gonna put the uh, red deck there. Is that fair? Yeah. Cool. So. I'm going to go one step further. Instead of making one card change places, I'll make the entire deck change places. Are you ready? Watch the, watch the, no, seriously, watch the blue deck right here. It happens on three. One, two, three. You see, now they're the red cards. Yeah. And if the red cards are here, they were in the box in your hand. Open up the box, take the cards out, turn them over, spread them out face down, have a look. You have 
the blue deck. So you can see that performance was done with Reagan. She actually told me after the camera has finished rolling that that was her favorite of the three tricks. So what you have here is you basically have a two-phase transpo. Uh, you have a two-phase transpo, but because you're using two packs of cards, it is so clear, it's crystal clarity. So the first phase, they pick a card and it transposes with the identical card from a different deck. And then the second phase is the decks change places. And honestly, every single time I do this routine and the decks change places, it blows people away. And one of the reasons it does that is because it's so unexpected. When you say you're going to do it again, they expect you to do it with the card again. They don't expect you to do it with the whole deck. And from a routining point of view, uh, and you can watch the performance back and see this, they are holding on to the pack of cards. They think the red deck's in the red box, but they've already got the whole blue deck in the red box and they're completely unaware of it. And then you do this, uh, you know, this really nice color change and the deck changes places. They don't expect it. Now, theatrically, that's how a routine should be. It should build. If you're going to do a second phase, that second phase should be more impossible. And that's what we have here. Now, I know that obviously 99% of the people that watch this channel are magicians and they're probably going to look at this and they're going to go, isn't that, isn't that um, a bit maybe obvious, you know, when you're setting up the second phase? Trust me, I have done this for years. It flies past people. And the reason it does is for a couple of reasons. The first reason is um, people aren't expecting it. it. It's like Guy Hollingsworth says, it's done on the offbeat. You know, you've just done this routine, you've just opened up the deck and shown that the card that they picked is now in that deck. They think the deck, the trick's over. And before they actually, before you get into a position where you say, well, let's do it again, you're already in a situation where you've done the dirty work. You already have done the dirty work at that point. So now all you have to do is put the deck in the box and it happens in the spectator's hand. It's a beautiful, well-constructed routine. The nice thing about this is you are left with two regular decks of cards. You've got one card that's displaced that you just need to either palm off or put back into the other deck, and then that's it. Um, you are left with two regular decks of cards. Now, the other thing about this trick, which is really, really nice, is, and, and, and David Acker never mentioned this in the book, but one of the decks isn't even shuffled. So you can actually have one deck in mnemonic order if you want to, or some sort of memorized deck order. Do this routine, you're left with two decks of cards and you can pick to do a routine with mnemonica, or you can pick to do a routine with, uh, with a regular deck of cards. In actual fact, uh, Pitt Hartling has an amazing routine with two different colored decks, one of which is set up in mnemonica and one of which is set up in a regular deck of cards. I was going to actually include this in this set of three, but I didn't because I didn't want to actually bring mnemonica into the mix. But you could easily go into that routine or just put the mnemonica deck away and use a regular deck doesn't really matter um, the point is one of the decks isn't shuffled um, I always and I've talked about this on the channel before I always carry a mnemonica deck and a regular deck with me so I'm good to go with this anytime anywhere there is literally no setup um, I lied there's like a five second setup you can set this trick back up within five seconds walking, walking to the next group of people. You don't require a table. I mean, I did it with a table because I had one in front of me, but it's very easy to do without a table. Um, there's no difficult moves, no difficult sleight of hand in there. It's relatively easy to do. And again, it's just a really nice plot. You know, uh, laymen are used to having somebody go pick a card, but this is very different. You know, the bold claim that you're making at the beginning, I'm going to make this card disappear, and they're anticipating that, and they're anticipating it, and then boom, you say it's done, and then you show them that the card has changed into a different color, and then they realize what happened. And it's that moment of magic that I love, where you kind of, they think that it's not worked, and then it has. Um, I just love everything about this routine. It's a very well-constructed routine. It's very easy to do. And for a working professional, it is really, really, uh, you know, commercial. So that's your first trick. It's called Switchback. It's from Random Acts of Magic by David Acker. Check it out. It's highly recommended. So the second routine using two packs of cards that you've probably never seen before is available as a download. Now, this uh, magician is very, very unknown. He's not like a Greg Wilson or a, uh, a Sean Farquhar. And I found out about him by accident, just browsing the Magic Cafe. And... Um, a little while ago now, and he blew me away. You know, I was watching some of his routines and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good. And since then, 
I've ordered a couple of his books. He's got downloads for sale on his site. He's got books available on his site. And this particular trick he has published in a book, uh, which you can buy directly from his site. I'll put the link at the bottom. Uh, but also, you can, you can, he has this as an individual download. So if you want to just learn this trick, you can get this as a download. And the only place you can get it is from his site. It is a very nice open prediction. It's a very nice open prediction. It's called IHOP. Um, and it's a really nice open prediction. I'm a big fan of open predictions. What I like about this is the logical use of the two decks. Because you're, you're taking a card out of one deck and you're putting it into the other deck to do the open prediction. You know what? I performed this on Reagan. Have a look at the performance and then we'll talk about why I like it so much. Reagan, we're going to do another trick with two packs of cards. Red deck and blue deck, all right? So this time we're going to do something different. We're, we're, I'm not the one that's going to be doing the magic. Okay. You're going to be doing the magic, okay? Cool. First of all, we need a card picked from the blue deck. So from this deck of cards, we need a card picked. Okay. I want to make it completely at random. So I want you to cut. You can cut a small packet of cards, a big packet of cards, a medium-sized packet of cards. doesn't really matter. And then when you've cut them, turn them face up and put them back on top of the pack. Is that fair? Yeah. Now, you could have cut anywhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the card that you cut to. That card right there, we're not going to look at it, but that's going to be the card that uh, that we're going to use for this. You happy with that? Yeah. Cool. So we've got a random card here. Nobody knows what that card is. Not me, not you, not anybody. Now we're going to use the red deck. Now, before I start, would you like to shuffle the cards or do you trust me? I shuffle. You want to shuffle them? You don't trust me, that's fine. Or do you want me to shuffle you them? Shuffle. Oh, me? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't I'll want shuffle. to shuffle. Let me shuffle. shuffle, okay. And I'm going to put that blue card... Yeah somewhere in the middle of the red deck. So you can see down in the red deck, we have a blue card in the middle. Yeah. Now, it's fairly easy to know where that card is right now. Even if I cut the deck, you might be able to follow where that card is very possibly. Uh, you might do, I don't know. So instead, we're gonna try and do it like this. I'm gonna hold the deck this way, Yeah. okay? And what I'm gonna do, you're gonna take the cards yourself and you're gonna deal them onto a pile on the table like this. Okay. Any time you want to stop, I want you to stop. Okay. And then when you stop, the card that you've stopped on, we're going to put to one side. Okay. Now, if you want me to deal, I can do, and you can just tell me to stop, or you can deal yourself. It's up to you. You deal, and I'll stop. You do. Okay. So I'm just going to go through it any time you want to just say stop. Stop. Now, that's this card. Mm -hmm. I have two questions for you. Yeah. You could go for this card if you want to, yeah. or I could carry on dealing and we can go further down. It's totally up to you. Carry on. Okay, no problem. Stop. Okay, so that one, that one, or carry on dealing. The six of hearts. The six of hearts. Are you sure? Yeah. And I told you that, the, well, you saw it. You picked a card from that, red, that blue deck of cards, and then what you did is we put it in the red deck of cards. And you stopped on this card and this card only. And you could have carried on. In fact, you did carry on. Yeah. If you hadn't have carried on, it would have been a completely different card. And yeah, I said you were gonna do the magic and you stopped on the six of hearts. And I'm so glad that you did. Isn't that weird? That's great, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. But here's the thing. I'm gonna put the... Uh, I'm going to put the six back over here because there's a thing that you need to understand. I knew you would stop on that six of hearts. I know that you 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 used intuition, but I knew you would stop on that six of hearts because there was never a six of hearts in the red deck. You could look through that deck and you wouldn't see a six of hearts in there. And the reason is, before, I didn't show you this, but before we even started this trick, I put one card here in the blue yeah. deck and that card's been there from the very beginning. And that card... Goodness the six of hearts. So you saw the reactions from Reagan. You know, this is an absolute killer of a routine. And I think one of the reasons I like this is it is so clear as to what's going on. You get them to pick a card from the uh, from the blue deck, and it's very, from the, you know, whatever deck, blue deck. It's very clear what's happening there. They cut the deck, they take any card. You then put it into the red deck, it's lost. 
they can then deal, they can stop anytime they want to, they can carry on dealing, where just like a normal open prediction, but when they stop, you show that that's their red, that, that, that's the, uh, the stranger card in that deck. Now, right there, that's where most open predictions finish. But what's nice about this is that you can then say, you've got that kicker ending. So you can then say, well, you know, you were able to find the card that you picked, but it was all predetermined. I knew which card you would pick from the very, very beginning. And I know you don't believe me, but, you know, in this deck from the very beginning, I actually put that card from that deck. And it, it, it almost comes full circle. It's like an extra kicker at the end, proving that everything, you knew exactly what was going to happen before it even happened. It adds an extra phase onto an open prediction plot, but that extra phase actually adds to the routine as opposed to taking away from the routine. It is really clever. Now, um, there are a lot of advantages of this, uh, this particular trick. Again, it's a real working routine. Uh, it's not that difficult to do. Probably the hardest move is the reversal move in the second deck, but even that's not too tough. And there are other ways of approaching that, although the way he's actually structured it is brilliant. Um, it's, uh, it, again, you don't need a table. You can hand the deck to somebody. You don't need a table at all. It's designed for walk-around situations. Um, it's very clear what's going on. Uh, it takes up no pocket space other than the two decks. Uh, the one thing I will say about it is there's a couple of gimmicked cards used in this routine. Um, so there's a small setup ahead of time with one of the decks. One of the decks is completely normal, um, but the other deck is, it has, it has a small setup of two gimmicked cards. But the amount of use that you get out of those two gimmicked cards, are just, it's just ridiculous. So you have two gimmicked cards, one deck set up with two gimmicked cards, but you know what? They're just literally plonked on top of the deck. So what you could do is you could have two regular decks of cards and then you could um, uh, you could just have the gimmicks in your pocket and palm them on top if you want to. That would be very easy to do. And also the deck with the gimmick cards, it's very uh, it, it, that deck's not shuffled. That deck's not shuffled at all. It's just cut. So just like with David Acker's routine, that can be set up in Mnemonica or any sort of setup that you want. Uh, but because you're cutting it, it feels like that deck's been mixed up. Um, at the end. The gimmicks can be just stolen away very, very easily, and you're left with two regular decks of cards, a regular deck of cards and another regular deck of cards that has maintained its order throughout. So, uh, and, and I have played with doing this routine and then going into David Acker's routine that I showed as the first thing, and it does actually work. It does actually work going from the one to the other. You want to start with this routine because of the gimmicks that are involved, but then because of how you're left, I don't want to give too much away, but because of how, how you're left at the end of this routine, it's very easy to then go into David Acker's routine. Now, the interesting thing about David Acker's routine is although it's, you know, stranger cards going into another deck, and there is a sort of a similar feel between these two routines, it's also very different presentationally. This is more of a, you're going to do this. This is kind of almost a mental magic thing. Well, the switchback routine is more of a sort of a, a, a magic trick, a transposition type thing, or a vanish. It's, it's pure magic. So they do work really well together. Um, but yeah, and again, both of them will keep the deck in mnemonic or any other stack that you want. So there you go. Um, there's no disadvantages to this. It is a real worker. Um, you know, it, it's another thing that you can use to carry two decks of cards around with and go into this at any time, anywhere. So it's another routine that I highly recommend. So the final routine using two packs of cards that you've never seen before is by the one and only Darwin Ortiz. This is uh, by Darwin Ortiz. He published this, I, I want to say Card Shark. I'm probably wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. But I think it was Card Shark, although it might have been Scams and Fantasies. I've, I've been doing this for years. Um, it's a great routine. Now, this is kind of... Uh, Mike, Michael Vincent did this on television um, a few years ago now. I think it might have been on... Um, Pen and Teller Foolers, I don't know. Well, he did a version of this. He did his own version of this, and he performed it absolutely beautifully. Um, before he performed this on television, nobody had ever seen this before. Uh, and then when he performed this on television, a few people were talking about it. But then since that, no one's been doing it again. And this is something that I've never seen anyone do now for a few years. And it's such a shame because it's such a strong routine. I performed this to Reagan. Let's have a look at it. Then uh, I'll talk about why it's so good. I'm going to do one more trick with two packs of cards. Okay. Now, I know how you don't like shuffling on camera. So... Yeah. Um, are you happy with me shuffling the cards? Is yeah, that okay? That's cool. Fine, yeah. So we'll give the red deck a shuffle, and I will give the blue deck a shuffle. 
Now, the blue deck's going to become important a little bit later on. Okay. We're going to put it right there. But we're going to use the red deck for you to pick three cards. Okay. So you're going to have three cards from the red deck. You can yeah. have any cards you want to. So I'll, I'll spread them out like this. Grab any three cards that, that you want. That's one. Perfect. And you can show the camera as you take them. Okay. You want the second one? There. You see that? Okay. And one more. Any one that you want. Makes no difference. That one there? Yeah. Cool. So remember the three cards. Now I'm going to give you a pen. And what I want you to do is sign your name in big letters, not little letters, huge, massive, Reagan sized letters <laughs> uh, across the backs of the cards, not the faces, but the back. So I can see you doing this. Um, and you might want to put the number 22,476 on there, which is the amount of unopened emails in Reagan's phone. <laughs> like I said, what's worrying is you, part of your job is to answer the emails for our company. So <laughs> wonderful. Are we good? Yeah. Now we're going to put the cards away in the uh, in the in the deck, yeah. and you're going to pick which one I put first. So, which one would you like me to put back first? This one. That one. And because you sign the cards on the back, you can see that I'm really not cheating, and that card really is getting lost in the in yeah. the, in the middle of the deck. We'll do it again. Give me another one. This one right here. Are you sure? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to cut that one there. Is that okay? Yeah. And the last one, if we'll take that one, and, and try and remember the cards. Normally I do this on three people, and normally I have three people pick cards. Uh, it will be, uh, you know, obviously you're trying to remember three cards, but the fact that you wrote your name on the back of them should make it a little bit easier <laughs> to remember. Now, there's a reason why I've got this, uh, this red, this blue deck here. Yeah. The reason I've got the blue deck is because, very, very simply, the three cards that you picked inside that red deck mm -hmm. are going to have the same three cards in this blue deck. The same three cards that you picked are going to be in here. Yeah. So if you picked a ace of clubs, two of clubs, and three of clubs, it stands to reason there's an ace of clubs, two of clubs, and three of clubs in here as well. Yeah. I'm going to try and find the three cards that you picked from this deck. And there's a reason I do this. If I use the red deck, you might think I'm cheating because you've been around magic for long enough to know that I can control a card. So I can keep track of where a card is. Now, I might even be able to keep track of three cards. So if I found your three cards from this deck, maybe, just maybe, I'm keeping track of it and it's yeah. not that impressive. But you picked any three cards and this deck was shuffled at the very beginning. Yeah. So it would make it next to impossible to find those three cards in this deck. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm going to try and do. And we'll give the cards a shuffle first, just so you can see that I really have shuffled. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. So here we go. I'm going to try and cut to the cards. I'm going to give the deck three cuts. First cut, I cut to a card. If this was one of your cards that I cut to, that would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, the Jack of Clubs. Was that one of your cards? Yeah. Amazing. Now, it might have been luck. It might have been a fluke. So let me try and do it again. The second card would be there. Literally, yeah, I think I've got it. It was... Um, the Seven of Diamonds, was that the... Yeah. You look so confused. <laughs> Looks why I got into magic. Um, <laughs> one last one. So I've got the Seven of Diamonds, I've got the Jack of Clubs. The last one's the hardest, because there's only one card left. Did I get that? I might have been off. What was the last card, can you remember? Ten of Clubs. The Ten of Clubs. But here's the thing, that, was, that, that wasn't bad, was it? That was pretty impressive, right? Yeah. That I was able to find the three duplicates. But here's the thing, Reagan. I didn't find the three duplicate cards from the blue deck. I actually found your three cards. No. The ones that you put in that deck, you see. You probably don't realise this, but this is the ten of clubs that you wrote your name on the back of. This is the seven of diamonds that you wrote your name on the back of. And this is the jack of clubs that you wrote your name on the back of. And you can examine everything. Okay, isn't that a great routine? Again, it uses two packs of cards, completely different to anything else uh, that we've discussed on this video, but it's so strong, it really is. The two decks of cards are really just there, so you've got that awesome kicker ending at the end. Now, now the important thing with this trick is making sure that they understand why you're using a different deck. You have to be very clear when you say now, you know, you've picked the cards from this deck. Maybe somehow I could control them or I could know, keep track of them or know where they are. I'm going to use this deck and then that will be impossible. And that's the reason to pick up this deck of cards. Um, now, it's, first of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to lead with the big negative, the two big negatives, because there are a couple of big negatives to this. The first three 
big negatives. Okay, so the first big negative is it is not the easiest routine in the world to do. There's quite a few tricky things that you need to do. You need to do a perfect farrow or a perfect partial farrow. Uh, you need to be able to do a Vernon substitute transfer. Uh, there's a few other things that you need to do. Uh, when my uh, David, when uh, not David, when um, Darwin Ortiz first uh, published it, and he had the control of the cards, he used a cull. Uh, but I prefer to use a double undercut style thing. Achieves the same thing, but I think it's just as clean. Uh, but it is not an easy routine to do. It's, it's something that's going to take a little bit of practice. The second thing that you need to understand is every time you do this trick, it's going to destroy three cards from the red pack of cards because they're signing the backs of the cards. Um, so you can't really use them in the deck anymore. Um, you know, like if you do an ambushes card, if you want to, you can keep the card in the deck um, it, it, because it's on the face. It doesn't really matter too much. This does matter. So if you do this trick three times, you're going to lose nine cards at your deck now that's not an issue for some people you know for me that's not an issue because you know i can always tell how hard i've worked at a gig by how many cards i've got left in the deck at the end but i know it's an issue for some people you are going to destroy three packs of cards three cards from the deck every single time that you do it and the other thing is you are going to require a table now there's no angle restrictions but you are going to require a table now uh, I have played with doing this without a table and I've played with trying to work out a way of doing it uh, for walk around and it's just not as clean. The thing that makes this routine so good is that you do require a table in front of you. Now you don't need to be sitting down at a table, you don't need to be lapping or anything like that, but you will require a table. Um, so this is really, you know, I do this in parlor shows quite a lot, but I've also done it, um, you know, kind of when you're doing mix and mingle and you've got like bar tables and people are sitting at the bar tables i do that a lot at bar tables i'll, I'll go hey let, you're there here at this level and i can just put my deck down here let me show you something you don't need a close-up pad or anything but you do need a table that's important to to be aware of outside of that this is such the reactions you get with this are ridiculous because they think that you're doing one trick. They think that you're very simply trying to find their three cards, which is impressive enough to a layman. Like Reagan, for example, she knows a lot about magic. She doesn't know how any close-up magic's done, but, you know, she works for my company. She, she's around magic 24-7. She's in the illusion show. She sees a lot of magic. And after I did this, she was like, that just doesn't make any sense. How did that even happen? When did, when did that happen? Because there's time misdirection there. They pick the cards from the red deck. You then tell them you're going to find them from this blue deck. You're finding the cards. It's very, very clean. By the time that you've got the kicker where you actually show that it's their signed cards, they've completely forgotten. So then it comes back to them and they're like, what? The time misdirection and the structure of the routine makes this simply brilliant. It really does. So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's that that you need to uh, bear in mind. And also, you know, just once you've actually got that second deck in play, the way that you're actually cutting to the cards is really nice. Now, I did in the hands slip cuts, as you probably saw, but you don't have to do in the hand slip cuts. There's so many different ways of doing this. You can do um, sort of table slip cuts. There's so many different options that you can do uh, in order to cut to those cards. The point is, they think that one thing's happening and then something else happens and it's a real kick in the face. So yeah, it's a really nice routine to do. Um, again, the nice thing about this, this is the only one of the three routines that I've presented where there is no setup. You can literally take out the red deck and the blue deck, have them shuffled, take them back and you can go into this routine. And at the end, the decks are examinable. So it's examinable before, it's examinable afterwards. In that regard, it is a very commercial routine. There's no angles, which makes it really commercial as well. It's signed cards, which make it really commercial. But the downside is you need a table. It's not easy. Um, you know, it, those are really the main two. It's not easy and you need a table. But outside of that, it's great. I highly recommend learning it, as I do with most of Darwin Ortiz's material. But yeah, you can check it out. I believe it's Card Shark. If I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will comment down below. But uh, yeah, it's a really great routine to learn. So there you have it, guys. That's another three things. Uh, it's another one of the three things series, three tricks with two packs of cards that you've never seen before. Uh, let me know what else you want to see in this series. I have an absolute blast putting these together, which is why they only come out every couple of weeks, because it takes a long time to do the research, figure it out. You know, it really does take a long time. I, sometimes I find tricks and I'm like, oh, I haven't done that in years. That'd be a really good one to put in. Um, you know, I'm yet to find one where I'm, I'm, I'm found a new routine, but you know, that might happen. So let me know down below what else you want me to do on the three trick series. I know a few people have said mentalism. I think that's a great idea. I know some people 
people have said more coin magic because I did the cards and coins thing, but people apparently want to see more coin magic, so that's cool. I could look at different gaffed coins. Um, you know, many, many years ago for Magic Scene magazine, I actually wrote a series of articles, a world of gaffed coins. And I, uh, I highlighted different routines with gaffed coins. So maybe I can kind of revisit something like that. The nice thing about this series is there's literally so much you can do. Um, so let me know what you think down below. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll be back tomorrow with a rant. So make sure you check that out. And then over the weekend, we've got an Australia and a QA. and a And then I'm here at six o'clock every single day with a magic live. So I will see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.